Good afternoon. Today's priority is to make sure you have an enjoyable lunch. We can't use our brain power when we're hungry. So I hope you have a cup of tea and a sandwich to hand and you can enjoy these 15 minutes with me on the subject of resolving priority conflicts. So since we're talking about priorities, one key priority for Kepner Trigo has always been to create a useful result for you. One of the most useful resources of all our lives is to choose how to spend time. We all have only a limited resource, something like half a million waking hours, at least in the rich world. Once each one is gone, it's gone. So I want to help you do things that are both enjoyable and productive in this particular webinar. Let's have a quick look at the series for those of you who have not been on one of these before. Here's the full list coming to the modules for the first time. They're all recorded. They're all available for you to listen to after the live session. And you can find the information at brighttalk.com. Search for KT at any time. This is module four, resolving priority conflicts. We've had one, two, and three up till now. And module five coming next Tuesday, defining the problem effectively. And we'll wait for the slide to catch up in just a moment. So to the business of today. Looking at different ways to look at priority, particularly why I enjoy elegant inactivity, how to measure impact, and there will of course be the usual bit of participation for you as we go through this. Uh, so there is a case study based on our friends at Metaphorus that are coming later in this webinar. and the slides will catch up in the end. Let's move on forward and talk about importance and urgency. Now, some of you are familiar with the Eisenhower matrix. That may not be enough by itself. It's been recently popularized by Stephen Covey, the late, great Stephen Covey. The challenge with this is often that the issues haven't been clearly explained. You might want to have a look at module two for that particular issue. And even if the issues have been clearly explained, the data and the reasoning for making something a priority is missing. So we do want to ask whenever we're presented with a task or a challenge, what are the factors that prompt you to put this in this priority box? If people are saying it's urgent and important, we need that data behind that information. And priorities should, like everything else that we're doing in business, be based on hard data. Priority, just because somebody says so, is perhaps not the best way of moving forward. Let's look at some perspectives on priority. Look, we all have our jobs to do, and naturally we see priorities through a narrow lens. So when we're asked to change those priorities, it's perfectly reasonable to ask for the information we need to do that. If you imagine you're a heart surgeon about to gown up for theater and a life-saving operation, a customer finds you and says, look, I'm TikTok, I need you now you're gonna want a bit more information before you agree to reschedule your appointment in theater. Some of the notes here contain some useful data points and others do not. But the general rule is prioritization really should be based on some hard information. And if you have a look at this, some of them have some hard information, some don't. Now, here's a question for you to vote about. And I'll just open this up now. And open the vote up. And the vote is not opening up. Oh, well, that's it. Ah, interesting. Never mind. There we go. Let's move forward without that vote. So 
What makes things matter? First thing is the degree to which the issue affects the work of the organization. First of all, now. Second, in the future. And third, potentially. And we should always remember that positive opportunities may be important than today's problems. This is my favorite Dilbert of the day. Now, urgency, as the slide catches up, is also about deadlines. And it's also about the point where action would become meaningless. What do we mean by that in practical terms? Here are three kinds of data that you might see relating to urgency. If you have a look at the trend of a particular issue or problem or challenge, you can see the curve is getting steeper and steeper. It's becoming rapidly exponential and you can identify a point of being out of control. Second data set will be about opportunities. If we see a certain peak in opportunity at a certain time, we have to be ready in advance of that. and We will miss the peak if we're not. And the third will be a deadline which is dictated to us by somebody. It might be a regulator. It might be the health and safety executive. It might be simply having to get the accounts done. There's certain things that have to be done on a specific date or else. So we should need, we should really be getting that information from our colleagues whenever there's a request made. Now, whenever there's a priority anyway, we should be considering that priorities have half-lives. What was true 10 minutes ago may not be true now and certainly may not be true tomorrow. So we may need to reevaluate consistently, not just go down through the list of priorities and knock each one off one by one. So now we have an exercise. If you go to the attachments tab, and then you're finding the module four case study. If you have a click of that, and make some notes on screen as you look at it. Those of you looking at this after the event, uh, looking at the recording, you can also open that case study, have a look at that, and use your highlighter on screen to mark where do you see hard information, hard facts about priority, and where do you see just an opinion that something's important? And if you want to throw that into the question box and just tell me wherever you see some of those, that would be quite entertaining as we go through. Where do you see hard data that indicates something is a priority and where do you see nothing but an opinion? And if you'd like to type that into the questions, that would be great. So for those of you not able to connect to the video, my apologies. For some reason, Bright Talk is moving relatively slowly. Uh, please do uh, raise a ticket with Bright Talk on that subject after the event if you're having trouble. But I would also suggest that if you're having trouble with the video, do have a look at the recording after the event and you should be able to get a much clearer picture of what we're doing by doing that. So now what contributions do we have? Complaints increase from three to 50 a week. Yep, brilliant. That's hard data. And 
never got any more. Keep them coming. We'll have a good good look at those as we go through towards the end. But as we reach ten, ten and a half minutes, oh, no shows, 2,000 a week across the network. So there's going to be hard data about priorities in all of our lives. And where it's missing, I think it's well worth asking people to provide it because otherwise we get into so many, everything being a top priority. And we can't have that. You know, there aren't enough hours in the day for everything being a top priority. And that brings me to the point that I promised you earlier, the beauty of not doing stuff. Saying no is always hard because we're helpful people and we don't want to. Uh, don't, losing 4,000 jobs a week to taxi drivers and so on. Yeah, good contributions. You're picking those up. So let's talk about not doing stuff. Now, when you finally see the slide appear on screen, I know you're having some trouble with video, you'll see a an interesting little chart of GDP per hour, gross domestic product per hour in 2018 uh, from different countries. And apparently Ireland people produce $102 worth of whatever it is they produce. And in the United Kingdom, only $60 of whatever it is we produced in 2018. So. Now, those kinds of comparisons are a little bit invidious, so let's not worry about too much. But from your own point of view, think about how much value you really add. Your work may be worth $100 an hour, may be worth $10,000 an hour or even more to your organization or to the customers that you serve. Whatever the number is, whatever the value is, tangible or intangible, you won't want to take your mind off it for lower value tasks, however urgent. So if you can try asking for some hard data from colleagues and managers about the issues they're asking for help with, then often people realize the lack of importance themselves. So if we look at the blue questions, what exactly is the impact of this right now? Well, the thing hasn't gone live yet, so actually it's not. And is there any evidence that the thing's getting worse? Well, no, not really. Um, what happens if the completion, completion date's pushed out? Well, the boss will be cross. Okay, so I'm not hearing anything that drives me to think I should drop everything for this yet. And there's a clue. Many of the things that we're asked to prioritize actually ain't that important. And if we did them, nothing would happen. And if we didn't do them, nothing would happen. So asking questions like this for hard data will often, I find, get people to realize that their request is not as urgent as they think it is. And if they insist, you can always refer them to colleagues who work, whose work would be bumped and have a significant impact. So as always with these sessions, uh, I want you to get some practical value out of it. And the practical value comes from a number of places. Those of you who were in an earlier session, session two um, will already have the book chapter but if you don't have the book chapter grab it from here that's the new rational manager chapter seven and at your next meeting what i'd like you to try to do is just as you're making notes underline the things that are relating to priority and start to look for supporting data that relates to priority? Are people justifying the priority with hard facts? And if not, what conclusions can you draw? And I'd love to hear your ideas and thoughts and your feedback about all of that as you work through that at kevnatrigo.com. So next time out, we are talking about problem definition. Why object and defect, one of each is best why we need to worry when we have many problems and how to improve your problem solving tangibly and really quickly. You can get more in-depth training as always at kepnatrigo.com and have a look at that. But always do contact me either by email or Twitter or in the LinkedIn channel and tell me what your feedback is. I do hope you enjoy your next meeting and you get your priorities right. But for now, this is the end of the presentation for today. See you next Tuesday, if you have a mind to come. Bye-bye, everybody.